Welcome, Emily. Thanks for joining me in uh, Salzburg. We tried to catch up with you in Riva, but that didn't work out for various flight reasons. So yeah, it's... I think every time I go to Riva, my flight's delayed. Yeah, <laughs> it's part, but, of, part of the experience. It's part of the experience. But now we're in lovely Salzburg, and, and we get the opportunity. So thank you yeah. for taking some time out. Uh, first things first. Would you like a, a nice cup of tea? Oh, I love a cup of tea, Rich. Apparently, you need one, right, after last night's <sighs> party. Yeah, just a small recovery. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so we're here for the ISC uh, conference, and uh, and you've obviously seen some of the, the lectures that have been taking place. Anything caught your eye in that that group of? Yeah, pr probably a couple of things. There's some really nice focus on um, biopharmaceuticals. You can you can see how that um, now that there are more and more biopharmaceuticals coming on the market, that we need more and more methods to analyze these and to mm. properly characterize them. And there's some really nice work coming up around that. Well, there's a whole section of posters devoted ah, to that. It's incredible, right? and I um, I chaired a session around that, which was which was really exciting as well. Who was in that session? Ah, uh, so that that session was a really nice one because the uh, the keynote lecture in that was from Michael Lemmerhofer, who's just won the um, Jubilee Award from the the Chromographic Society. So he was speaking about um, plasma DNA. It's quite a lot of excitement about about that topic at the moment. Okay, and and you have you given a. And yeah, I gave, I gave a lecture yesterday as well, and mine actually, as it turns out, was also about the general biopharmaceutical theme, so talking about how we can better characterise monoclonal antibodies. Right. Again, pretty hot topic in the pharmaceutical industry. Well, that's it. I mean, that's where we're heading, right? I think that trend has really emerged as one of the, the big trends in pharma as they kind of pull themselves away from the patent cliff and, and start addressing some of the issues yeah, that weren't a, possible before. It's a whole new challenge for them. But it, and I was talking to Wolfgang earlier, and... and um, you know that the, the concept of bioanalysis does actually start bringing some different challenges and problems for, for those that have, you know, typically been in small molecule uh, characterization. So, what, what do you think? The kind of does there need to be a mindset change to move into the, the bioanalysis side, or or is it just a, a learning curve? I think there's probably a couple of real challenges in it, and you, you see that across the themes in this meeting. One is that you get really complex samples. So, yeah. how can you get as much information as possible out of a really complex sample? And the other one is trying to find something targeted in a really messy matrix. So you might say, oh, my sample's complex, so I'll yeah. look at everything in it. Yeah. Or I need to, to find this one component, so the rest of it's this messy matrix I need to get rid of. And this right. is really probably the biggest challenge that comes with, with bioanalysis. Yeah. So a little bird told me that you have a rather uh, exciting project that's currently underway. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's um, extremely exciting for me. We've just um, got some uh, funding approved from the Australian Research Council right. to um, start a new venture in Australia with an industry partner, so um, Trojan Scientific and Medical. And this is, this is really exciting because it's something which is deliberately about getting academics and industry to work together right. so that fundamental research is driving um, technological change in industry. Yeah. And also, what's really nice about it, you know I'm passionate about education, Of course. is that it's about training the next generation of scientists. Yeah. So what it funds primarily is PhD students yeah. and postdocs, but they have to spend time interacting with industry. In fact, they have to spend a year of their time embedded in industry as part of their training. Right. So um, we just had that funding approved. So we're about to advertise. We're um, recruiting all around the world. What are, you, what are you looking for? Well, most of all, we're looking for people who are excited to, to work with industry yeah. and who've got, um, they're creative, they've got, um, they're interested in technological innovation, but really it's all around separation science. So yeah. we're the ARC Training Centre for Portable Analytical Separation Technologies. Right. So, so portability is one of the main port Portability things, is right? really important and how we can miniaturise things to make it um, them faster, um, less invasive, for example, with sampling. Yeah. Like the difference between taking a blood sample from a vein or taking a drop of blood from a finger. Yeah. So to try to move in that kind of well, direction. That, that in some ways leads back to the article that you wrote for us, The Future Separations. It's one of actually our most Absolutely. popular articles. And I think it was quite, not possibly controversial. I know you had a few comments <laughs> about it. Um, but it very much fits in that theme of, you know, plausibility and, as you say, less invasive procedures. So yeah, absolutely. That's a big, it's a big aim, big objective. So how, what are the... What are some of the plans in motion to, to drive that forward? Clearly, there's the industry academic collaboration, which is important. What are the things, uh, you know, how are you going to shape that? Because you're the director of the yeah. new centre, right? Yeah. So really what we're interested in is looking at, at where we can develop capability. So, you know, whether we can develop new methods of sampling or sample preparation. So what you see is a theme also in this meeting, and in a lot of meetings I've yeah. been to this year, 
is that everyone's talking about how we can get better sample preparation. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things. So, in our, yeah, our and so ex- absolutely, it's a great, great article that one. And one of the um, the challenges there, of course, is how we can handle really small samples. So yeah. we're interested in how we can take technology that's been used for larger samples and apply it to micro sampling. So sampling is going to be a big part of sampling is going to be a really big part of what we're working on. And then, of course, we have to. We're not moving away from separations. So well, no, but I think as you said, separation technology. When we're talking about complex molecules in complex matrices, and the, you know, I don't think detection, mass spec detection, can can cope yeah. with all that, right? So separation is going to clearly be a big important part. And then I think you mentioned the other key thing there, which is detection, because if you talk about mass spectrometric detection, mass, most mass spectrometers are pretty big. They are rather large. And so hopefully we're going to move more in the direction of um, someone that uh, you know well, 908 Devices. In fact, I think they came number one in the Innovation the, Award. You're right. That's a nice plug, 908 Devices. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, I think it's the, the M908, right? Is a, yeah. Is the, and that, but that found its you know, original application in the military field. You know, there's a clear, a yeah. clear goal, but clearly there's also a link between that well, look, and th- what you're trying to I do. I think it really links well in this whole vision of how we can take things and innovate in the way that um, we design this technology so that so that we end up with something that is portable in a way that we probably never dreamed was possible in the past. Right. Well, it, I, in some ways, it's like I sometimes describe it as sideways innovation, right? It's okay yeah. to go faster, more accurate, more sensitive, but that doesn't solve all the problems in the other direction. So, for, for example, in the developing world where actually they don't even have the most basic instrumentation in some cases. So That's is right. that is that part of the goal? Is, I mean, clearly... It's an international aim, but it's, it's, it's obviously based in Australia. But I guess you're looking for international minds uh, to, to join the collaboration. Look, absolutely. And one of the, the really exciting things about the partner we're working with is that, is that through them we're linked to the international world. Um, right. Trajan are known as a company that, that partners with, with other companies in what they do. And this is a big part of their model and a big part of the model for our centre. Yeah. So it's, um, it's very exciting. So it's already, I think it's already began, right? You were, you were in the early phases of we're recruiting. recruiting. So, you, were, you were in yeah. the recruitment phase. Yeah. So when, you know, what's the kind of timeline of getting things underway and actually starting to see some, some progress being made? So we're looking to start, um, start looking at applications from that recruitment around the end of October. Right. And we'd really like to have everyone in place by the end of February next year. So, oh, so it's quite a quick turnaround to, to get the team ready. And, and then from there... We can then, get started as soon as possible and then um, we're going to see what go happens. Step, full steam ahead with the research <laughs> and... And, and see what happens. Clearly, there's a there's an industry academic collaboration there. Are you are you also planning to work with other academic groups and 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 sort of collaborate more widely on an academic level, or, or are, you, are you kind of creating a core and and and, and your own focus? Oh, look, this is we're really interested in, in collaborating, and um, you know about it across the Australian Centre for Research and right, Separation that was my Science. Question, yeah. This has come out of across, and it involves. A number of the members of ACROSS, so it's it's part of the way we've operated for a very long time, and we're not going to move away from that. In fact, we're really excited about the opportunities this presents for collaboration with lots of people, yeah. academic and industry. I think, you know, I really think that's important. It's a way that science moves forward these days. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, the the whole ACROSS thing has really put put you on the map, right? It's a quite an unusual situation to have such a focus of. On a certain on a certain area in in, yeah. a, in a quite an isolated part of the world, as, as far as I know, you do a, spend a lot of your time on uh, flights to and from <laughs> various places. It was like a 38, 33 hour journey, was it, to get here? Yeah, thirty four hours. Yeah, I'm used to being really tired at conferences. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a lot of travelling, right? If, you, if that's where you're based, then that that makes things tough. Yeah, but I think it's pretty special what we've got there um, in Tasmania, and it's not just Tasmania. Across, of course, is at Monash and the University of Western Sydney as well. But I think one of the things that's really special about it is the fact that we've been able to build a team that collaborates rather than competes. And for me, when I was starting out as you know a, a, an early career academic, yeah. it's a really good model and to learn that you get much more benefit from working with others than trying to, to out-compete them. And, you know, it's, and do you think it's a good a, way to start. Do you think there's a more... I mean, it's a, we were talking about this yesterday. I know about the route into academia is not always straightforward or easy in certain no. parts of the world. And, and clearly, I think ACROSS has got... Maybe a little bit more of an open mind and and less issues with legacy of of you know a big big institutions tend to follow the same path and they don't necessarily try new ways to you know recruit students from around the world. I know you feel quite passionate about about that. And I think that's come from the diversity we have within by having different people there and having a you know a, a core group of people and a critical mass. Then we've got different views rather than just having you know one professor that's making All making that call. Yeah, it's some. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not saying we always agree, but it's, <laughs> but it's actually, you know, but we work really well together and I, you know, I love working with these people. It's, it's what makes it exciting and one of the reasons that you're happy to turn up to work every day. Yeah. So I think um, at last count we worked out we've got 22 nationalities in the cross. So. Wow, so that's really it's a, uh, it's multicultural. A, yeah, it's a pretty great environment. Yeah. yeah. And maybe finally, let's just touch upon, you know, what you think the, the really big challenges of the future are. Everyone's got, like, like if you could wave a magic wand, is, is there a particular issue that you'd like, this, this needs solving first? Wow. I'm not sure I could put my finger on one challenge, but I think that um, something that is not going to go away is our quest for eternal life or eternal health. Right. And well, I think this was put really nicely by Jeremy Nicholson yeah, the, yeah. the other day when he was talking about living to 100 and being 100, and being healthy for 100 years. Well, he's like the, the 100 in one. Yeah, I can't, 100, remember, I can't 100, remember exactly. 100, put, but, yeah, yeah, 100 years of life, but 100 years of health, and that's clearly important. And I think this is something that really resonated with me because it's something where um, everyone's impacted by, by health-related issues and we're all hoping that we can find the secret to eternal youth or right. eternal health or both at the same time. And so I I'm think not sure a lot about of... eternal youth, but I think I've gone. I think I've gone too far. But health it's would, too late, health, isn't it? Health, health, be satisfied with health. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so I think this is really going to be the challenge as we get better and better technology, and that we can um, we can understand perhaps the the basis of disease or markers for disease more easily. Then there's an expectation that we can find a way to to control and or think, to and feeding into things. yeah. I think and feeding into that is this concept of more possible analysis, right? Because yeah. if, if, you, if you make it more accessible, you actually start to increase the number of samples and the, the amount of information that you get from, you know, whole populations. I know we had an article on, um, like, the future of smartphones in analysis, and he said it's not, it's not just the fact that we can make it more accessible, it's the fact that we get so much more data from so many more people, and can, if we can get to that point where we constantly monitor you know, people's health. You can see the, the onset of disease rather yes. than trying to find the, the biomarker after onset. That was something that Wolfgang also touched on earlier. And I think it's one of the things there too. It's about um, about whether we're taking an active or passive role in that in our own health. But but the other point I think that, um, that Jeremy touched on the other day that is really important is who this is accessible to. And that for me is the big challenge about whether we get to a point where we, we may solve some of these problems, but it's only for the very rich and that um, we basically give up on the developing world. And I think that's a really important challenge for all of us, and especially those of us that are developing the technology. Yeah, sure. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining me, Emily. I know, you've, I know you're busy. I know, you, I know you're feeling a little tired, but Just little we tired. really appreciate you joining me for a, for a nice cup of tea. Feel free to have some yeah. now. And, and, and <laughs> thank uh, you. We'll drink some more beer um, yes. later tonight.